So here's a picture of a Wartburg Roaster, and I've looked at this rear cover about a thousand times. This is the third installment of building the BMW body. And uh, the first thing I'm going to concentrate on is this rear cover. So I've given it a ton of thought, and based on the tools I have and the knowledge I have, this is the approach I'm going to take. It's going to be a composite setup here. It's going to be a block of balsa. It's going to be aluminum on the bottom. And it's going to be a fiberglass cover. And then there's going to be a screen for ventilation. So this will all get painted. And I think it'll look pretty good. Here's a view looking down on it. I've learned that if you cover these engines up, they just overheat and vapor lock, and then you got to let them cool off or they'll run again. So I'm just going to make a nice, large screen opening if I can pull it off. This whole top cover here will be fiberglass. There'll be some plywood bulkheads in here that the, ply, that the fiberglass cover attaches to. So you can see these screws screws are kind of my thing so there's going to be plenty of them okay so I've been uh, messing with uh, uh, my first attempt at uh, mocking it up and uh, we'll see how that goes okay so I'm using trusty uh, old uh, mat board here to work out all the little things um, first I sized this panel to match the height of this seam thinking that that would continue all the way around it might taper down a little bit I'm not sure I'm, I'm not completely sold on that height but using the same mat board I created a rudimentary arc there which looks pretty good uh, down here on the bottom I'm using some of this rosin paper uh, to see if I can get some kind of curvature to the bottom Let's see if you can see that that ties in with the rest of the body I didn't think about that until just a uh, half hour ago I thought hey you know maybe that might look all right uh, so we'll see I'll, I'll, I'll fine tune that later I also made a little opening here for the pull cord and then uh, here is the uh, can and filter sticking out of there. This is the section right here that would all be uh, screen or perf metal. And then up here would be aluminum. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to have to have a custom header. It's either going to have to turn real sharp and then go down and come out through here or it'll make a, a more gentle bend exit through the side turn and aim towards the back uh, it'll be a custom arrangement um, it'll have uh, this type of muffler uh, but then this part you can buy these where you can kind of make your own they give you a bunch of bends and parts and pieces and they give you this little stubby piece and you weld your own we'll see but this is the muffler I'm going to use. Okay, so I got to do a little bit more work to this. Um, right at this point, straight down, that's where the plywood's going to be. So this rear section here is going to be the balsa. Shoot, that will be a pretty good sized piece of balsa. I'll probably have to hollow out the middle of it. Although balsa doesn't weigh much. All right, well, let's see how it looks. Okay, well, I'll work on a little bit more and see where it takes me. I've got continued to work on this since my first prototype, and uh, I've determined a couple of things. Um, this is now the height of this piece, and it, it doesn't line up with this seam over here, but that's okay. But this will be aluminum here, and then from here up, 
going up and over this uh, piece of plywood that I made. This is attachment point. This will be fiberglass. And it'll come up and over and down. And then it'll line up with this piece of plywood right here, which is just taped in place right now. It follows the angle both sides. And then it also, this is the angle that uh, the fiberglass will have to meet right here. There's, that'll be the rear attachment point. There'll be a strip of aluminum here that we'll, I'll use to join the fiberglass and the aluminum. So that's the basic arc right there. Here's the profile of the balsa block. Okay. And you'll notice there's a piece of white foam over there. I'm going to use that uh, to create the fiberglass cover. Um, once I get these aluminum pieces on, then I, I have a hot wire cutter. I'm going to cut a block that will fit in between this piece of plywood and this piece of plywood. And then uh, it'll rest on, on this. I'll maybe put some cross pieces in there. So then I'll shape that foam until it, it uh, follows this uh, correct angle here and here and to a point where I know I can put a balsa block on there and continue and shape it till I get it, what I want. Okay, so now if I, once I have that uh, piece of foam, just what I want, then I'm gonna put it on a bench, block it up, and then I'm gonna drape fiberglass and epoxy resin over it and let gravity do its thing, and it'll take on the shape of that piece of uh, foam. I'll put some wax paper or something underneath it, like a mold release. So, I've made a couple other parts this way, just letting gravity pull the fiberglass down once it's all wetted out. So, uh, whether or not it's going to be strong enough, I don't know, I'll have to do several layers of fiberglass, and I've allowed uh, for that thickness right here. So, that's the direction I'm going. Uh, these are my nice true patterns. I'm real happy with the way they fit. So I'm going to use these two sides here to make the aluminum body at the lower part. Then I'll attach this plywood to it. Now that will give me a firm foundation to put the, the foam in there. So I think I finally established the direction I'm going. Win, lose, or draw. This is what I'm doing. And here, let's look at it for the thousand and first time. The right rear lower panel needs a cutout uh, so the uh, K&N filter uh, will come through the side so you can get to the choke and the pull start. So to make this cut clean, I use a router and uh, I've been working on uh, a piece of scrap plywood I had here. Get this out of here. So I, uh, you can see here, where I've marked it where it needs to be. So from my paper pattern over there, I used it to mark the plywood. I've cut it out. Now I'm in the process of getting this sanded nice and smooth. So the router will drop in here and the bearing will ride right on this surface. So I'll have to put this aluminum on top of here in just the right spot, which I, I'll use. I'll drill some holes, locating holes that I can use for a visual reference. So let's see how this goes. Here I've made a hole. I uh, drilled a hole and then I used some tin snips to kind of open it up, pound it flat so the router won't get stuck on it. And then I uh, have my router here. It's got a pilot bearing. It's a two flute cutter. Cuts aluminum pretty good. So now I'm going to drop that in there and it's going to follow the pattern. Uh, I have a couple witness, witness marks here or reference marks. And then a line here that I... I've clamped the aluminum to the board and then the board to the table so nothing's going to move. <clears throat> so let's cut this thing.
Well, it makes a hell of a mess, but it does a nice job of cutting the hole. There you can see, you don't need to file it or anything unless your wood pattern's a little off. But I got pretty close to my marks there. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So there's how that looks. Okay. Glad to get that done. Now I have to mark the panel uh, to uh, center punch it so I can drill some holes. So because the two panels are in essence identical, I, I'm using the paper pattern. I drill some little holes in it that I can use with the punch. And then I can, uh, on the other side, I can turn it over, the paper over, and then use it to punch those holes. So let's do that now. Okay, so I'll do the same to the other side, and that'll, that way I can drill them accurately. Here I'm uh, punching the other side, and I flipped over the paper. So once I get these punched, drilled, uh, then I can install them on the two sides of the rear of the cart. Looking forward to that. <clears throat> okay, I have all the holes drilled. I've got to deburr these. So before I mount them, I have to uh, sand them. I use a pad sander with uh, 80 grit. And later, it'll get sanded down to 180 for primer. So I sand both sides, and that knocks off the burrs. Oh, and then this tape here. Until I know how this fits the plywood, I'm not going to punch these holes just yet. I'm getting pretty close to having these two lower uh, panels installed. Jeez, it's taking me most of the day to get them ready. Uh, but I wanted to do a decent job because they're really the structural part of this rear cover. Um, I have some screws I still have to put in to the steel frame. Those go pretty quick. I pilot drill them and then use a self-tapping screw. Piece of plywood uh, went in. Uh, it was hard to get it started, but once I got a couple screws into it, it didn't take long. See, that's the angle that, that the uh, top of the cover will follow. Yeah, it came together pretty good at the seam. So I have this uh, motor sitting in here loose, slid all the way forward. And uh, I have a little bit of room here if I have to adjust the motor. Plenty of clearance for the filter. And then this opening, although it may seem a little on the large size, it'll act as a ventilation, which is important. And then I can easily get to the pull start and to the choke. Of course, I'll have to relocate the switch. I'll put that somewhere else. And then uh, I have this little template here. This, is, this represents the uh, balsa block. Hang on here. Okay. So that'll be the shape, the finished shape of the balsa block. And it'll be, you know, I'll, I'll make it a little bit large and then I'll just sand it into submission, right, where I want it to be, and that'll. 
That'll be strong enough for the tail and not too heavy. Okay, so um, a few more screws, maybe a couple of braces here. This turned out pretty stout, but I might put something in here or a gusset down in there. This turned out nice and square too. I'm happy with that, square to the frame down there. And then I can uh, fit in that piece of foam and continue on. It's just a whole bunch of little tiny steps that get these cars finished. Little by little, you get it done. So I finished putting in the screws. I couldn't get to these with the drill because of this hub, so I'll do that later. And I was liking the way it all came together, but this, uh, this tail here flexed a little bit side to side. It needed some additional support. So I came up with this plywood gusset that I've got clamped in there. And I'm telling you, that, that made it nice and stout. So once I get that in, that should solve any problem with the tail moving around. I'm gonna get that in there because I wanna get this piece of foam setting up in here and get to shaping that. All right. I installed the screws in this little gusset. Here, some back here. And then uh, over here. So now this is just rock solid. I'm liking that. Nice big opening for airflow here. Okay, moving on to the next project. Before I can slip the uh, foam block in there and start shaping it, I had to do a couple of things. Uh, for one, I had to add uh, these aluminum strips here because that's actually the attachment point. So I want to sand the foam to that line. And then, so the cover would have just a little bit more thickness to it, I added a, a strip of 32 thousandths in there. So that it'll just be a little bit thicker here where I got to put the screws through. And then I also added this piece of wood, it's temporary, and this one because I'm going to use some hot melt glue here to help hold the foam down. And then um, I'm gonna drill some holes here and uh, I'm gonna thread in some long drywall screws. You know, they'll thread into the foam real easy. I'll do that back here too. And that should keep, with the glue and those screws, that should keep the block in place while I do all the shaping on it. So the next thing I have to do is, uh, I have to cut that piece of foam, that big block, down to a manageable size. So I have a, hot wire foam cutter that I have set up and I'll show you how I slice up the foam. Okay, I'm going to cut this block of foam to size here so it'll fit on the cart. I use a variable transformer uh, that, uh, here's the unit, it has this dial on it so I can dial up the voltage and it runs through this cord into this wand, cutting wand, I guess you could call it, that I made, oh geez, I made this maybe 10 years ago. I used to build radio control airplanes and I would cut foam wing cores with it. This is nichrome wire. And these leads, there's a lead like this on each end. But I would cut wing cores and of course they have to be the shape of an airfoil. So I'd have a piece of aluminum held into the block of foam with a rivet, a couple of rivets. And then it would follow that, it'd be a nice smooth edge for the wire to run on. And I'd cut a nice airfoil. And now in this case, I just want to square up this block of foam, get a nice flat face. So it's just a straight piece of aluminum. I push the wire against it and then let gravity pull it down as I dial in the voltage and it starts to melt. So let's see here how this works. See if I can get it to fly. Okay. So I just rest this right here and push lightly against these two pieces of aluminum. I want to keep pressure on it but not too much. And then I dial up the voltage. You can actually feel the voltage going through the line. There, see how the wire is going through. If I turn it up too much, it'll just burn the wire up. So a little pressure in 
and I'm just letting gravity do its thing. It's kind of slow, but it works. It's cutting pretty good. Voila! That looks pretty good. So I'll get rid of that. Okay. So now I have to cut it to nine and a quarter inches this other way, and it's going to be sized. So I just turn this off. Here's here's the block of foam sitting here in the cart. So you see where I mentioned I have to cut off. Or I have to cut it to nine and a quarter. Well, that's that's to here. That's from down here up to here. So I can get rid of a whole bunch of this foam to start with before I begin. Let's see if I can get a better look at this. Um, so after I uh, trim it to height, then I can lop off, you know, a bunch of this. I can just freehand that off of there. So I'll keep paring away at it till uh, I got it to where I can start sanding it with a block. Now later, once I have this all shaped to, to come to this contour and to these aluminum strips down here, and once I remove this, then I'm gonna have to add an inch or so, maybe a little more, on each end because I want the fiberglass to come all the way to here, not just to here. So that'll be easy to do. I can glue it on and then I can just hand block that to the right profile. And uh, I think that might work. Okay, I gotta keep whacking away at this thing. Now I'm going to cut this other piece of foam off of here so I have the height right. You know, it was, it's funny, I, it's been years since I've uh, cut any foam, and I'd forgotten, you know, it's coming back to me, some little little things, uh, you know, like, uh, you leave a little run out on each end, so that the cut is more accurate. And then you also twist these uh, rivets as you, you kind of spin them as you put them in. And you slightly angle them against the, the direction you're going to be pushing. And then I would sand this edge to 600 grit so it just you know flow perfectly smooth slide over it so you know by the time I get good at it again I'll be done so okay I'm gonna make this cut I'm holding the block down with duct tape okay So that uh, cut for on the height there turned out all right. And then I uh, used my old pattern here to give you an idea how much has to come off of there. So all this got to go away. And then, of course, all this here. So, let's see. I think what I'll do is I'll make a pattern that the wire can ride on and make it a little bit higher. And then I'll, I'll make, I'll, I'll use the wire cutter to cut this off. Here's a more refined pattern for the initial cut, just to get the rudimentary shape. And I'm holding that in with uh, some little rivets until I figure it out. I'll transfer that to uh, a piece of hardboard, sand the edge real smooth, and I'll use that to, for the wire to run on. Okay. I have the patterns made for both sides, and I've used uh, quarter-inch hardboard. Um, you know, for a one-off cut, this will work. If I hold the wire in place too long, it'll burn it, but it'll work for roughing out this block. I'm using the rivets to hold it in, and I have uh, 
the transformer here and the wand and I'm gonna make the cut. So let's slice this piece off here. So I'm pulling on it and a little downward pressure to keep the wire tight between the two forms. You don't want to pull too hard or you can break the wire so you let it catch up with you. Constant pressure and constant movement. I made a little paper pattern of the shape of the chassis and I can use that to put some rudimentary lines here. So I'm just going to use the wand to freehand off these parts and stay outside these lines. I'm using the wire cutter to save on uh, sweeping up later with all the foam that's going to be spread all over the place. When I made the cover on old 27, there was foam all over the garage, the house, that stuff gets into everywhere. So I'm going to keep it all contained here in the garage. This is where I do my painting also. So here you can see how it's taken on the shape. I still have a lot of sanding to do and there's going to be a lot of foam all over the place. But uh, this actually works down pretty fast. So I'll just start sanding and shaping and trying to end up right here. And uh, try to end up right here. I'll definitely sneak up on it. I almost cut off too much. Whew. Okay. All right, I'm going to clean up the shop and get everything out of here and then start working on the foam. Trying to get some kind of a contour here. I'm going to grind on the foam now, so I have a fan to keep the air moving. Eye protection and a dust mask and then a side grinder with, a, I think that's an 80 grit. So, I did a little test pass right there, it just took it right down. So this is taking shape pretty good. I didn't go too far. I want to get it close, but I want to take it down to the final shape by hand. 
I have to add a little piece of foam in here before I go any further. That's getting there. Okay, I've managed to get through the initial hand blocking and uh, I still have, you know, quite a bit to go actually. Uh, but uh, it was encouraging. It's, it's taken the shape pretty nice. It's kind of an art form, you know, you just gotta eyeball the thing up. I, uh, you know, after I ground it with the 80 grit, then I took this uh, block here, and that's 36 grit. You can buy this in this width, and I made a block from the paint store. And then I'll finesse it later with this 80 grit. This is a sanding belt, three by 24 sanding belt, stretched over a piece of wood for a block. Nice. So I think uh, this is going to be the end of the third segment. Um, now, uh, in the next one, I'm going to get this cover finished. Uh, I, I'm getting close to the uh, Grand Prix up in Titan, about seven weeks away, so i got to get with it. Uh, but I was thinking, you know how I explained earlier in the video, I'm going to drape uh, fiberglass over this to take on this shape. So let's say that doesn't work. You know, I'll put wax paper down. And then uh, once I pull the part off of there, if, if it doesn't work, then I can use this as sort of a buck. Uh, actually, what I would do is wherever I might have a rib for a buck, I'll use the hot wire to cut it. And then I'll have the exact inside shape and angle. Uh, so, because what I really want to do is do a metal cover, you know, and do a wood buck uh, and pounded into shape but I'm just flat running out of time so anyway I have a plan B if it doesn't work out so uh, okay this is the end of this segment <laughs>